Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream. We are going to be getting started here in just a moment, so we hope that you're enjoying the music while you wait. We will be live very, very soon. Just want to say hello there to Excelsior, who was first, I, the Melon, who was second. That's right. Get in your place. <laughs> Jackson Tasukahara, welcome. Blood Dragon, welcome to you. Talon24, the Jabroni, how's it going? Good to see all of you popping in. <clears throat> A lot of familiar users. It's really good to see you coming back. It's going to be a fun little stream. So we're going to get started here in just one moment. And that moment is now. Oh my gosh, that music's loud. Woo, Woo that's loud music. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Calm down, music. Okay, that's that's better. <laughs> uh, welcome to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Welcome. It's such a delight to have you coming in here. We have some news about Everspace One. Obviously, you see it in the title. I mentioned it in the Discord. But we're on sale right now. Eighty percent off that is a big percentage of a sale okay um so if you have any friends who have been looking at the game they're like ah you know i don't really have that great of a pc i don't really want to spend a lot of money in that regard because i would want to max it out and they happen to have a console that also has the name xbox in it then you should let them know uh and see if this is something to their liking you know so there's that so through our demonstration here and answering questions and kind of directing all the fun sort of things that we normally do in these community streams, we're going to be playing through a run of Everspace with an Xbox controller. So that should be fun. That should be nice. I'm not the best at controllers, uh, to, to, to put it straight up, but uh, mostly a keyboard or mouse player. But still, there are some people who can do some crazy things. Uh, on controllers, especially because of the way we've bound the strafing in particular, which I'm pleased to show you how that uh, couples together with what we have here. So yeah, game audio is still a tad too loud. Okay. I got you, fam. That was too low. <laughs> Making sure we're good. Final reason to pause watching the lecture recording. Oh, snap, Talon. Oh my gosh. Runeclaw, I want to leave this world and fly into space. Maybe you can help. I can do my best, Runeclaw. Welcome. I also want to say hello to everybody on YouTube, everybody on Twitch, everybody on Mixer. Um, if you have any questions from any of those sites, please barrage the channel. Let us know what you want to know. This is a focused community stream where we give you all the details, as much as we can anyway, um, for latest happenings like the Ever Everspace One sale. And we also are going to be dipping our feet into the Everspace 2 waters at the end of the stream. A little bit of the dev build, nothing too crazy, but we might have something new to show you. So I do hope you can all stick around for that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and continue where we left off. Oh yes, how could I forget? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, last time we played, um, everybody had mentioned they wanted some really wacky colors on the uh, gunship so that's currently what it's setting as <clears throat> now if i can get my buttons to do what i want them to do ah uh, yes so we're going to do a ship other than the gunship today um i'm feeling like colonial interceptor is going to be a really good choice for new players in fact uh what do you guys say to an entirely new run a fresh save state um, does that sound interesting to you guys, or would you rather see some beefed up stuff to get into the heart of the content of where you could get later? I'm gonna let you guys decide that as I check it out and see what other people are saying. A focused community stream is the community so focused? No, no, a focused community stream where we put the focus on the community. You devious little person, you. 
Want to start a new run. All right, Jabroni. Fresh says Blood Dragon. All right. I'm getting the vibes that we need to start anew. So that is what we will do for you. Options. Game. Reset game. Goodbye. New game. Third person. Not inverted. I think. Uh-oh. Did we want to be inverted? Not right Crap. Me. We maybe have already I'm messed up. Anyway, there's this elaborate those. story or whatever in Everspace. It's actually quite nice. I'm kind of like playing it off a little bit. A but seriously, I encourage you to put I a lot of focus in, in of what plans. is happening throughout the game. It's not just a super boring uh, traditional roguelike where it's like the story doesn't matter because you're just like playing over and over again. It's actually Shit, important in how it ties in to the roguelike loop of this, this? arcade space shooter that you'll see. So very, very good. So we're gonna go ahead and jump through this story, even though I told you to put emphasis on it. That's how we roll around here. Let's see. Um, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, assistance? I suppose I could use some pointers. I think my controller has something wonky going on. Let's see. Left trigger is thrust forward. Gamepad right trigger is fire primaries. Okay, everything's fine. Everything's fixed. I just had to remind the game who's in control here. All right. Playing with us Xbox guys, nice. Absolutely, Joseph, yeah. I mean, we obviously we love anybody and everybody who is participating in the game state. We understand that, you know, everyone comes from a different walk of life. Some people have the most insane PCs of all freaking time, and some people have gotten a, an Xbox One at a garage sale for half off. And we want, we want to support everybody, no matter uh, what your financial position is, uh, no matter what's going on in your life. Um, and so we provide that opportunity to as many consoles as possible that we could. And that's kind of the same thing we're doing with Everspace 2 as well. So here we're just going through the tutorial. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of showing you how we do things around here. Tutorial is a great way to get a feel for the controls. Obviously, because that's what a tutorial is for. <coughs> and uh, it just kind of helps you get a general feel of what the game is going to be like whenever things get really hot and heavy. Before shooting, so the missiles can home in. So we'll just kind of take this at a leisurely pace so you can kind of see what's going on. A lot of controls popping up on the screen. And you can customize the scroll the controls a little bit further as well. Uh, much like you saw me going into the controls support. So that if you don't like it, you can adjust it. For the Xbox version in particular, you have different control schemes. So you would choose one of, I think, four different variations on how to navigate that. And then you have a couple different uh, toggles. So like swapping the roll and the yaw, for example. More things like that. <laughs> Talon, that's funny. Um, through the course of the game, being that it is a roguelike, we are going to be going through procedurally generated arenas. Each one of these points will provide a new opportunity or new challenge for you to face off against randomly. So you want to set yourself up for anything that you could encounter before you really jump forwards. Some people like to do this thing where they just jump as many times as possible and then run out of fuel and then they die and they're like, man, this game's too hard, lol. And it's, it's counteracting the, the very nature, the very gameplay experience that we've crafted for you to do. So definitely make sure that you are exploring and capitalizing on the situations at hand as opposed to just going crazy. Um, I am going to turn my camera shakes off because I don't like it. I'm also turning the vibration off because it's awful. I hate vibrations. I'm kidding. I don't... Calm down, everybody. Excellent. Nice and smooth and buttery. So much better. At some but we give you a lot of controls of the varied effects that the game has. Um, because if you do have any sort of like motion sensitivity, like I kind of a little bit 
believe it or not, just a little bit. Uh, turning off the camera shakes actually helps a lot, right? <clears throat> so there's going to be a lot of loot in this game that you're going to be picking up and distributing accordingly or just scrapping and selling. <clears throat> And we wanted to give you as many different kind of opportunities as possible based on what you find. So you're never going to find a weapon that's just inherently better than another weapon. It's just going to be used in a different capacity. So you have to take a lot of notes on the attributes of the weapons to see how they are going to change up your approach to the game. For example, this beam laser deals less shield damage but more hull damage than this pulse laser and it does so consistently as a standardized beam. Versus the Scatling gun, the beam laser does less hull damage, but it does a little bit more shield damage. So as you can see, the beam laser is kind of like a middle ground weapon, whereas the Gatling's really good against hull, and the pulse laser is really good against shields. So for kicks and giggles, I am going to go ahead and swap out the pulse laser, Decide even though the pulse laser is amazing. So we're going to have this beam laser instead. There is an outlaw shipping coming. And in true traditional tutorial format, we wanted to give you just a little sample of what combat that's actually dangerous looks like before you're thrown into the massive expanse of the demilitarized zone. So we're going to just pummel this guy without so much as a sweat and pick up a blueprint. It appears, however, that we have exhausted our possibilities here. Blueprints are going to be the tools you need to craft. We'll talk about crafting in a little bit, but I'm really glad we picked up that blueprint so it's going to show you precisely how that changes some things. Um, also, I am so sorry I didn't say hello to Day Dallas VR Gameplays. He says hello. Hello back at ya. And Akibara, well, 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 hello. Well, 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 hello to you too, sir. It is a might fine pleasure. Xythonks as well, seeing you pop into Twitch. I see you over there. It's good to have all of you. How has your week been treating you? I hope it's been I hope it's been a good week for all of you. Is there a gun that deals the same amount of shield and hull damage in Everspace 2? So we are looking for the short answer is that we are carrying over a lot of the functionalities of Everspace 1 into Everspace 2, but we're also kind of reimagining it. So what I mean by that is, for example, <coughs> The beam laser is making a return in Everspace 2. It functions a little bit differently. And that's because of how the health systems uh, operate in Everspace 2 versus Everspace 1. So it's not going to be exact per se, but it's definitely there and the familiarity is going to be there as well. All right, so we're going to explore around this asteroid a little bit. And again, we are using a controller today. Um, just to give the Xbox players a sense and a feel of what it's going to look like. That GMB transport had to go. So it's like 50-50? Eh, kind of. It's, it's hard to explain. Maybe I can show you in Everspace 2 at the end of the stream so you can kind of get a better feel for that. I'll just generate a beam laser and show you. So one of the most important elements of Everspace One is your energy and managing that accordingly. Now we had some GMB help there, so that wasn't too bad. But the energy is the little yellow or tennis ball green color underneath the pointer, right in the middle of the screen. And the further it goes down, the less energy you have. In order to regenerate it, you have to not boost and not fire your weapons. Anytime you boost, like this, boosting, not just cruising, cruising is fine, but when you're boosting and when you're firing your weapons, it depletes your energy. So if you are trying to catch up to an opponent and you just boost and boost and boost, then you're not going to have anything to shoot them with. But also if you shoot and shoot and shoot, and then your opponent's turning to engage with you and you don't have any boost left, then prepare to take some hits. So it's really important to manage that. We're also going to go ahead and keep on cruising around these areas. In the nature of a roguelike, it is important to gain as much information and as many resources as possible before progressing to prepare yourself for the unknown. 
We might find a nice little base to raid in the next sector, but if we don't if we don't get all the missiles that we need, then it could be ugly. Also that little green blob right here, this is actually a little buddy that is established from the DLC itself. <coughs> DLC is called Encounters, which which adds a lot of encounters to your experience. And this will completely change some of the ways that you have visited Everspace, including meeting up with entirely new characters with unique missions and story arcs for you to Giant experience. Shipwrecks. What are they? Colonial fleet warships overwhelmed by Okar fighters during the war. You will find such wrecks scattered throughout the demilitarized zone. So we're just picking up a bunch of loot. How's the audio, by the way? Is it quiet? Is it perfection? I want to make sure you guys can hear and get all the sounds. Uh, Zythong says it's fine, good, and also asks, has the fifth one arrived yet? That's very thoughtful of you, Zythong. So for those of you who don't know, my wife and I are expecting our fifth child basically any time. We have not had them yet. So soon is the answer. Soon TM. So we're hitting 37 weeks uh, this weekend. All right, let's head over to that base, see what we can find. It'll be great. Encounters adds encounter. Wow, says Super Nuki. I know, it, we really struggled with the naming convention of the DLC. We were like, do we want to like fool everyone and call it something ridiculous that they spend all their hard earned money on something that isn't true? Or do we want to be honest about it? And I guess we wanted to be honest about it, you know? It's just, that's, that's I know that's right. not traditional of developers these days, but you know, it's just, it's how Rockfish works. So I hope you can bear with us as uh, we continue to post things that are true. Whoop! <laughs> oh. Now, I am using the left analog stick on the controller to do some little maneuvers without using my boost, which is quite pleasant. We're also going to swap over the Gatling gun because it deals more damage to hull. Make quick work of that. Light missile. Hang on. I want this. Perfect. We're all fueled up. That's, that's great. It means we won't have any trouble getting to the next area. Anything in here? Nope. All right. Good. So we are ready to bounce to the next location. I feel like we've covered the ground in there pretty well. So we just point to the green and jump on out. About the storyline, what happened to the Okar faction in Everspace 2? You're all wanting to know that Everspace 2. Good details, Akibar, and I like it. I really appreciate your questions. So there's not actually much that does actually happen to the Okar faction, actually, because I wanted to put actually in there one more time. I felt like I didn't say it enough. Basically, there's still, I mean, there's still like a rough peace treaty between the, the Colonials and the Okar, right? So through that, um, we'll have to see if things have gotten better or worse through that. See if there's anybody trying to mess with that further. And go from there. So, yes. Honesty is an ethical policy. Yes, it is. Now, if only we could get all corporations on that. <clears throat> it appears we have stumbled upon an outlaw base. Scavengers and raiders of every All right, so now we're putting focus over on this outlaw base, which we're getting information from the Hive unit. The Hive is a pretty popular character in Everspace One, who is bound to you as your colonial escort through the game. Little bit spoiler territory, but you are a clone through this game. And as such, whenever you're created, the uh, the company traditionally wouldn't want you to go crazy out in the vastness of space as a clone. You need some semblance of humanity, and that's what the Hive unit provides. It's conversation, it's sarcasm and wit, it's friendship. It's a lot of these different things so that you, you don't go mad. So it's bound to you 
as you are in this colonial vessel that you've spawned in. And who knows how long he'll hang out with you for. <clears throat> What's the relationship between the Okar and the Outlaws? Basically, Outlaws are acting outside of the law. And the priest peace treaties between the Okar and the Colonials, basically this area, these territories, these are owned by the Okar. And the Okar allow the GMB to mine in these locations due to the treaties. But there is not meant to be any colonial militarized assets in the zone. So it has to be all um, it has to be all mining, essentially. So the GMB are not per se um, a part of the colonial faction. They are their own unique faction who's put emphasis on mining. So they are fine existing here. But the Colonials, which I'm flying a Colonial ship, the Okar have a huge problem with that, which is why they're actually hunting you down because you're flying a militarized Colonial vessel. And that's breaking the treaties that were established. Not only that, but you exist as a militarized asset itself, which is a Colonial clone. So in both cases, not only your ship, um, but also your literal body being a clone is in violation of the peace treaties. This is a service station. Do you know what happens in a service station? I thought I asked the questions here. Do you? Um, refuel, trade parts, you are learning. So as you can see, there's a lot of instances where the hive is going to be in conversation with you, helping you understand new rules and regulations throughout uh, the DMZ and kind of what you can do and what things are kind of as like a self-contained continual tutorial when you encounter something new for the first time. Hey, 8100 80, D-Star, how's it going? It's good to see you in the stream. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to the next location. Your test has been completed, Hate Master. It was successful. Welcome to the stream. The Okar do hunt the outlaws Strange. because they are not following the rules, right? So the Okar and the outlaws do engage with one another. I saw myself again. Dying. This must be a memory from your original. Apparently a flaw in the transference protocol. The eternal system was meant to filter such... So Akibara says, after the end of Everspace 1, Adam, Adam become... Adam becomes a real human. Um, so, an interesting sort of element to that. Um, I know this is spoilery territory, but Adam, the original, is the human who's not a militarized asset, right? But rather, the clones that he's producing are. So, I'm going to leave it at that so that more people can kind of experience that story and see what's going on, uh, especially since we're getting ready to transition over into some new content with Everspace 2. We want you to be able to experience the story yourself and have a really strong understanding of how that's all going to tie together. And we do hope that you play through the game to get that. Obviously, if you wanted to cut to the chase and just get the story online, you can. But nobody this likes stories bad. spoiled. That's not fun. Is it? I don't think it is. So we're going to have to take out this Okar force. There's a, a uh, Corvette over there in the background. And because we are a colonial ship, they are very upset with our appearance here. Very disgruntled. And they want to make sure that we um, have a hard time getting out of here. So we're going to just pause here for a moment. They are indigenous to the class hey there, how's it going? Uninvited guests. Mikhail? Distrust runs is it Mikhail? I hope it is. I'm so bad at pronouncing names. Feel free to call me whatever you would like, because I'm so bad with names. <laughs> but also know that I'm a moderator in chat, so if it's anything terrible, you will leave. <laughs> Alright, let's take out this guy. We are going to use a weapon overdrive. This is the 
starting tool on the interceptor, which provides a lot of accessibility, especially when it comes to combat, of course. It basically increases your damage output and attack rate if you're using anything other than a beam laser. Eh, well, you know, it happens. We're also going to use a shield booster because our shield's kind of pummeling and we don't want that to happen. So the shield booster is going to increase our, uh, our charging. We're also going to drop this thing with some added light missiles. I don't want to give this guy a chance. Destroying this ship means that the jump suppressor is now gone. Like, it no longer exists. We literally destroyed it. So we can leave. Don't worry about Viridian Energy right now. But beings that you're trying to get from one side of the DMZ to the other, you, jump suppressors are a major problem because it means you can't jump. Because it's suppressing that, right? So it's good. So you have to either hack into them or destroy them. Most of the time you're hacking them. The only time you really destroy them is when they are on a ship. But you can also fly up close to several of the ships to hack into them as well. It just kind of depends on how you've built your ship, how fast you are, and what you can do. All right. We are going to explore this little group of asteroids. It looks like there's some hidden goods in here, protected by some turrets. I just want the goods. As you should too, because it's going to benefit your run. We're still only in... Well, I guess we're in Sector 2 now, aren't we? But everything we grab is going to make things easier down the line. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this. Don't need a device charger. You're going to see a lot of different tools that I pick up. Some are more valuable earlier in the game. Some are more valuable later. Some are more valuable depending on the ship that you're flying. Some are more valuable depending on the strategy that you're using. So you do have to take a very careful uh, approach to what you're collecting and why. So that you're not just um, gathering random stuff. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the next location and check out some of them points and questions. Super Nuki asks a really interesting question. He says, will Everspace 2 be grindy? Well, I think grindy is a very subjective term. Um, it's very much in the same category as like, will Everspace 2 be fun? Well, I mean, some people are absolutely going to think it's fun. Some people aren't. Some people are going to think Everspace 2 is really grindy. Some people are going to think that it's not at all. It depends on what your expectation of what that looks like. Um, but I can say that we are going to have a lot of achievements, a lot of unlockables. There's going to be a lot of territories that you have to be the right level to get to. There's going to be equipment that you have to get to the right level. There's going to be synergies that you might have to go out and explore for. Um, complete certain jobs for um, there's a lot to do in the game so if you think that having a lot to do is grindy then yes it will be if you think having to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again is grindy maybe if you keep doing the same things over and over and over like pick up the exact same job or go to the exact same locations um, it, there's so many different factors there it's, it's really hard to answer that question Let's go ahead and fly over to this site, pick up some mineable crystal, and we just want to keep going to these sites and extracting as much as possible. Crystals in particular are really great for upgrading weaponry. Each resource kind of has something that it does. Uh, it's more prone to being one crafting recipe than another. So whenever you go to your crafting, this is your equipment screen. You can see your primary, secondary devices and consumables on board your ship at the time. And so, for example, if we wanted to make more light missiles, we could jump over here and you see that they cost uh, right above me. We have the attributes and above that are the right required resources that show you you need four scrap and two ore. We have a ridiculous amount of scrap and ore. And this is because we've been exploring, we've been collecting, and as such, we can build 27 new light missiles. Should we desire that? Nice and cheap. Gives a lot of flexibility when you're in a bind to like be able to reach back out of that, put yourself on some strong footing. If you're not collecting resources, not only is it going to be hard to craft new things or upgrade things, you're also going to have a hard, have a hard time repairing your ship when it starts getting damaged. 
All of these things that we're looking at right here are component damages right above me. And each one on the left side shows that the required resources in order to repair these components it can be sometimes a little costly. For example, if our primary weapons got damaged, we take a big hit from an opponent and it, our weapons get damaged, we have to have three nanobots, 13 scrap, two power cells, and nine crystals to repair that. Thankfully, we have met all of those requirements. So if that does go down, we can fix it quickly. But if we, again, if we didn't do our due diligence and explore these areas and collect as much as possible, we would be in a rock, in between a rock and a hard place and or in between an asteroid and a black hole if you will and it would be very challenging to navigate the rest of the run so yeah super nuki i see another question from you i see are we the bad guys in the game that's a little bit spoilery but i'm just gonna say no but maybe but not really but kind of but no I hope that's incredibly transparent that answers your question fully and accurately. Just flank it with some corrosion missile. I'm sorry, I'm being really sassy today. I love your questions. Uh, thank you for being in the stream. <laughs> but yeah, so the whole conflict with the Okar and the Colonials, let's just like backtrack and talk about that really quick as I adjust my microphone. Basically, the Okar existed in what's called cluster 34 way before the colonials did okay and these uh these okar are reptilian species that can kind of be um emotionally compromised and so because they can get kind of hot-headed or just thrown over whenever something bad happens their entire species kind of goes crazy and the colonials um mostly humans uh, when they stemmed from Earth and they expanded into Cluster 34, the Okar were like, what the heck? And they started firing and the Colonials had to fire back and then it was just like, you know, the zone starts getting ravaged by war, right? And so the Colonials are sending more forces, the Okar are sending more forces. And it's just all out conflict until they realized, whoa, hang on a second. Our firepower is actually kind of on point, and we're both sentient. Maybe we should work something out instead of just duke it out. So after some really heavy losses on both sides, because, like, the, the war was very short, since there was so much just sheer destruction, uh, the Colonials and the Okar said, Look, here's the deal. You guys were here first. You're policing these areas, so continue to police these areas. We'll pull back all of our troops, all of our colonial military assets. We won't have anything here. We're really just interested to see what your area has to offer pertaining to resources and new possibilities of colonization. And the Okar are like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But if you send any colonial militarized assets, we're going to destroy them. And the colonials are like, yeah, no, that's totally fine. We'll send in some new factions um, that are going to do a really good job of taking care of this space. You can police it. We won't fight you guys. So long as you don't mess with us, we won't mess with you. Sound good? Hands were shook. Everyone was all happy about it. Because this entire area was still ravaged by war, that's why we're seeing all of this loot and destruction around here um, as we're flying through. We're picking up a bunch of military pieces from the conflict. So we're outfitting ourselves to pass through this. Our story is very different from that conflict that arose uh, maybe even a couple years ago between the Okar and the Colonials. So navigating through all of this, there are still people who, uh, who, with ill intent who do exist in these territories and they are known as the outlaws, right? These outlaws, they don't play by the rules. They're just looking out for themselves, me and mine. That's, that's their mentality. And in some cases, that's... Like, there can be, like, good outlaw factions that cover themselves, operating outside of the rules. But in most cases, they're attacking the, the Okar. They're attacking GNB. They're attacking whoever and whatever is nearby because they're just trying to survive. Um, whereas the Okar, they really only have beef with people who aren't supposed to be there, namely outlaws and colonials, because that's in violation of the peace treaties. And the GNB, really, you're just protecting themselves. They don't care who's there so long as they're not messing with them. And in most cases, the outlaw factions are attacking the GMB, so the GMB attack back. 
So that's kind of how all the different factions operate within the bounds of Everspace. This is also true in how things move into Everspace 2. But yeah, for the most part, I think that's a pretty good-ish summary. <laughs> Yeah, and we are just, you are correct. We're destroying Okar, but we're doing it because of self preservation, which you'll find out through the story. Um, we aren't necessarily like looking to fight the Okar, it's just that they're in our way. And that's because we are a colonial asset. We are being hunted by the Okar. We could simply run. I'm just looking for more loot, <laughs> I'm using gameplay mechanics to validate my run. But yeah, one could argue that it is not a morally positive decision that we are making, a morally good decision by attacking the Okar. Pretty good fish. Oh my gosh, Blood Dragon. I appreciate that you appreciate my uh, not so quick summary of the game <laughs> and the lore. There's a lot of lore in this game. It's it's pretty wild, actually. So here we're getting just a little information on the GMB, which are the yellow faction here. Um, and the fun thing about the GMB is that like they don't attack you unless you attack them, but they're not on your team if you will. Like, if the if the Okar jump in and the Okar are like, Oh, Colonial Clone! You must be eliminated immediately! The GMB are like, eh. GMB don't care. It's Why not their business. With a skull? This is to highlight a superior fighter. We are not gonna fight that guy. Down. We're gonna keep moving on. We'll have to see about that. So let's catch up and chat very quickly. Excelsior asks, what's the Okar equivalent to an Arc 9000? I don't know if we've seen it yet, actually. But we do know, and this is a good, good transition, good segue to talk about Viridian Energy, which you can collect if you own the DLC. Viridian Energy is the main energy source of the Okar themselves. So when we go into our screen here, it's going to be the one on the far left side, all the way to the left over there. That circle, we have seven Viridian Energy, and that's going to be used for some experimentative construction. Is that a word? Some better stuff in the game. <laughs> so the more Viridian Energy you have, the better stuff you can make. Uh, the Neutron Cannon has to be constructed with Viridian Energy. I feel like... Of all the things in the game, that's probably the closest to an Arc 9000 as a literal weapon that requires Viridian energy. I wouldn't call it an Okar weapon, though, because it requires a combination of different materials. And it's created not by an Okar, but rather a different species entirely, which we may or may not run into um, if we do a second run. We're going to keep on collecting as much stuff as possible and avoid dying, because that's that's a positive thing, is to not die. Result. And we are running low on energy. First run, you're normally going to have to deal with uh, some energy management. This is very common. But once you realize that you can't just boost as long as you want and blast as long as you want, I think that a lot of players get a pretty good feel, especially by like the 7th or 8th run they've done um, and bringing it all together. There's a lot of like subtleties and nuances in how to like capitalize in the game of Everspace. And learning all of those little details are going to change the entire experience from being a slog fest to too difficult to something that becomes really rewarding the more time that you put into it, more satisfying more worthwhile. So let's go ahead and take this mineable ore and then we are going to jump on over to the next location. I'm probably going to jump a couple 
areas really quickly just to show you a little bit more of what we see in the game space. I'm Giant Tree asks, what's the purpose of having more than one weapon? So each weapon has a different functionality. It's not that one weapon is inherently better than another. It's that each of the weapons provide a certain opportunity. So in, ex in this example, where we have both a beam laser and a Gatling gun, the beam laser is the most general all-around all weapon that you can find with some pretty, pretty decent uh, output. So in every case, the beam laser does the exact same amount of damage uh, between the hole and the shield DPS, which means you can focus an enemy down with shields, and then when their shield's down, you can keep blasting it, and the whole DPS is going to be the same. There's not going to be too much of an issue. The energy consumption's not too bad. The range isn't too bad. It's just a pretty well-balanced weapon for almost all general needs. Then if we look at the Gatling gun here, if we look at its DPS, we have 80 hole DPS, versus 40 shield DPS. So what that means is that we could use this beam laser to dish that shield damage down first because it's dealing more shield damage than the Gatling does. And then we swap over to the Gatling uh, once the shields are down to do some really strong hole damage. And there's a lot of different tools, a lot of different weapons that are going to provide even more special effects or modifiers beyond that. You have the flat cannon, which deals area of effect damage. You have the pulse laser, which is focused on shields. You have uh, the shock rifle, which is basically a sniper weapon. You have the scatter gun, which is basically a shotgun in space. And you have all of these different tools that you can mix and match and customize based on the number of primary slots that you have for your ship. So it's very important that you figure out your play style and figure out what's going to be the most effective in the situations that you're encountering. In a lot of cases, you really want one weapon that's going to do more shield damage and one weapon that's going to do more hull damage. It's actually why we provide just those two weapons at the very start of the game, the pulse laser and the Gatling gun. And then from there, when you get more experienced, you can get a little more daring. Say you don't have a single weapon that puts emphasis in energy damage, uh, or excuse me, shield damage. You just want your Gatling, and you just want a scatter gun, but then you find a device that disables your enemy's shield. So you disable your enemy's shield for like six seconds or so, and then you just like all out assault with your super heavy hole damage weapons for an easy victory. <clears throat> So lots of different combinations that can come just from this crafting and uh, itemization of Everspace One as a whole. So good question. Thanks for that question, I'm Giant Tree. A lot of chatter on YouTube. I love it. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate that. Akabara, uh, pertaining to your thoughts on Everspace 2 having a ship that can mount four different primary weapons at once. Whew, that is, uh, that's a bold request. We'll see what we can do. Um, I know that we want to make sure that the weapons are balanced and carefully chosen as you're flying through the, the game space. And there is a reason why we are we are very pleased with the results of Everspace 1 and how you can only choose one weapon at a time, though you can change pretty quickly as well. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we can find something that'll work out. All right, so we're going to carefully navigate this space so that we don't get destroyed by a mine. We're just going to boost out. All right. Wasn't too much loot in there. Let's go ahead and just uh, jump. Lightning in space? How? Magnetic field is causing friction. An anomaly. But quite visually striking. I'm going to leave that uh, character over there for when you guys pick up the DLC. But there are a lot of different characters that you get to encounter who have backstories, who have different quests for you to accomplish. It's a good time. I know I've been skipping Ooh, the story bits. My own. We're gonna we're gonna let this one play out, Obviously, just so you can kind of get a sample. From someone else. This is your it memories the of the original that created Adam. you. So these Almost are not your own personal memories. Quiet, reserved. It's from Adam's memories, the person 
that you are a clone of. And this is actually a problem with the Eterna system. The Eterna system is basically the the training was tough. The program Seth that clones. He stood up and uh, it's the that's a the real strong generalization. But basically Whenever clones are made, they're not supposed to have a memory, so the fact that you have them means something was wrong in the cloning process, which we'll learn more about as the game progresses. This is a good question from Matthew, says, What's your favorite weapon and ship? Me personally loving the gunship and the Gatling 40mm. Yeah, that's a pretty good combination on the gunship. That thing's an absolute beast. Um, I am a really big fan of the Pulse Laser MX, and I, the Scout is my favorite ship by a long shot. It's kind of disgusting how much I talk about it. Um, but yeah, that's that's where my heart resides, is in the scout. Um, I also like the coil gun. It can be tricky to use, but when it's used effectively, it feels right, man. It feels so good. Coil gun can do some serious damage. I also like the plasma thrower. Uh, it's a DLC weapon. But uh, it can be a lot of fun throwing, spitting fire in space. Does it make sense? No. Is it fun? Yes. You have drawn the attention of hostiles. All right. So we're using this beam laser to drop these drones pretty quickly. Um, you'll notice that when I take this guy's shields out, we are going to cycle over to our Gatling gun, so we can drop his armor out of, or excuse me, his hull down as quickly as possible. Beam laser would have taken nearly twice as long. So we saved a lot of energy by cycling weapons there. Feels good. We're also going to have to take out this drone carrier who's got a jump suppressor, which is unfortunate. But that's fine. Will console be getting a beta in the future or will it be a full release? Joseph asks. So we are looking to have full release for consoles. All of the alpha and beta testing and the early access is quite exclusive to the PC version. Um, there's a lot of reasons behind that, but to summarize it in somewhat of a short capacity, it's so that we can focus building out the game once before distributing it to other consoles, before building it out again, right? So if we were to merc on consoles and the PC at the same time, we're basically building out two different versions of the game at the same time, which is quite the equivalent of building two different games at the same time. So focusing down one, once that's done, then it's going to spread out to the other consoles, which we will do at the end of our development cycle because we are looking to have a release where the PC and consoles all happen at the same time. A good question. A very good question. A day one physical release? Matthew, that would be amazing. We have to see if that how possible that is. Um, yeah, that I have to leave it at that. That would be really cool, though. Why is GMB okay with jump suppression being a thing? Um, well, Super Nuki, for a number of reasons. They are not a big fan of jump suppression. Especially when it's the outlaws, they'll normally bring them down. But as a whole, it's mostly because their warp gates, the GMB warp gates, aren't even affected by jump suppression. The warp gates operate so much more powerfully than a jump suppressor can put out that it doesn't even care. So GMB is not necessarily just randomly jumping from location to location. Also, we're going to try and lock this guy down. Here we go. Oh, it looks like we're going to need... Hmm. Let's see. Let's just use this now and then build an energy injector, which we're going to use now to give us a little bit more energy to try and take this guy out. And eh, nope. Not going to be enough. We need more missiles, so let's go ahead and craft those. Because I really don't want to focus down each one of these drones with my shots. Get the rest of this guy down now. Perfect. More light missiles to boot. Of course, we're just gonna replace those with an ARC 9000. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Don't need an energy diverter. Pulse laser. Not a bad weapon, we just don't need it. 
Alright, so let's go ahead and jump to the next location. Just kind of moving things along. <laughs> My goodness, hate maker. Yeah, I s uh, hate master. Yeah, I suppose. Favorite ship and loadout, scout with T-coil, disruption missiles, teleporter stack discharger, and energy injector. RM Brooks, it sounds like you are a veteran of the game. I like that build. That's, that's pretty solid. That is a pretty solid build. Oh, hey, we have a little bit more story. We're going to run into this guy that I'm skipping. Basically, uh, his name's Seth Nobu. We had him in our memories. He was apparently our friend, and now he's trying to kill us. Why is that happening? I don't know. I wouldn't have this. I wouldn't have any clue as to why that's going on. So, uh, you discover this through the course of the story. Trying to either repair the relationship or destroy it. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it gets better. <laughs> Oh gosh, speaking of speaking of getting better, we need to not be webbed. Uh, this is a terrible thing. So we're going to convert all these drones to our side. And now they work for us. Good, good. A couple more shots ought to do it. Still no? Excuse me, sir. I'm I'm duking it out with probably your boss. Can you please uh, move aside there, sir? All right. Let's get this guy focused down now. Damn you, Adam. There we go. Now that was a curious encounter. More drones. We are going to use the beam laser just because its focus fire is a lot better on smaller targets. Why did he try to kill me? It should not Excellent. Come as a surprise that most people want to kill you. And we're also going to pick up this fuel. And then take care of the jump suppressor so we can keep moving along, talking about the game. Hmm, the jump suppressor, the way that it works is that it gives you a percentage and now you're basically playing a space game of hot cold. The higher the percentage, the closer you are to the jump suppressor. I think it's in here, pretty sure. Can I get the Neutron Cannon this run? It's actually impossible for me to get the Neutron Cannon, Joseph, because I am playing the very first run and I am not able to meet Maester Throng. But that would be pretty cool. We could probably do a run in the future that puts a lot of emphasis on the Neutron Cannon, because uh, it, it's, it's neat. It's a pretty flexible weapon too. Just kind of depends on the player's experience. Why are there outlaws? Is Seth an outlaw? Yes, yeah, Seth is an outlaw. Outlaws, uh, it's a very simplified term. Anyone who is not adhering to the rules of the sector, of the cluster, they are considered an outlaw. So, you know, I mean, you could look at the rebels in Star Wars, you could consider all of them outlaw to that degree. Or if you looked at... Um, Malcolm Reynolds and Firefly, he would be an outlaw in that sense. So the term is used a little bit loosely, but for the most part, they're the ones causing havoc in the demilitarized zone, attacking everyone and everything. Um, at least that's how it's portrayed and how you mostly see it. In which case, next time you could perhaps convince him not to shoot at us. Most of the outlaws, I would say, originated from the colonial fleets, after the treaties were established, they stuck around even though they were supposed to leave. So instead of leaving the area or joining GMB, they decided, you know what, screw it, we're going to stay here and take on all the spoils of war. We're going to capitalize on all the rich resources for ourselves instead of giving it to some money-grubbing corporation. We're going to establish a new life away from the strife that we had from our previous living arrangements, you know, etc, etc. An outlaw turret is simply a turret that doesn't really have any affiliation to it. It's probably set up as a trap or protection for somebody and their goods. Whether they are technically good or bad, we don't actually know. All we know is that we're trying to get out of here and we need as many resources as possible to do so. So we're scrounging up anything and everything that we can. 
And we're not afraid to take it. You are acquiring a taste for cast-offs, by the looks of things. We have our own little drone now. That's fun. Ooh, a shock rifle pro. That would be great if we had more energy. We're going to go ahead and dump that. All right, let's go ahead and jump again. We're getting low on fuel. It should be fine, though. Does that mean we're an ally? No, we are a colonial. We are tagged as a colonial. And the reason for that is because we didn't have a choice. In fact, when we were cloned, we were cloned from a colonial facility, flying a colonial ship as a colonial clone. We don't get to choose. It's what we are. We have to deal with it. And the decisions that we make through all of this probably are going to have repercussions that you might see in Everspace 2. But for the most part, we're just trying to survive. I see Eek! The real angry snail. Are there more intelligent alien species than just Okar? There are, in fact, more intelligent species out there than just the Okar. And I'm sure that you will meet some of them uh, if you buy the DLC. And also whenever we explore new territories within Everspace 2. In fact, here's one of the new species right now. What we subtly just call the Ancients. This is called an Ancient Splitter. You'll see why in just a moment. We're probably going to take some damage here because we need more energy. Yep, we're going to take damage. Oh! But these things like to chew on your hull. But they drop dark energy, which is a very rare resource. Which can be good for high tier crafting if you have the blueprints. Blueprints are acquired over the course of multiple runs, so when you find a blueprint, it doesn't mean that it's only accessible for that particular run. You will have it when you die and start anew. So there is permanent progression. In a lot of other cases, uh, when you die, you basically lose everything. Hi, it's Everspace 1 or 2 right now. It should be Everspace 1. I wonder. Yeah, so YouTube actually says it's Everspace 2. That's uh that's my bad. Let me fix that right now. Yeah, this is this is just Everspace. So thank you for pointing that out. That has been fixed. We will be doing some Everspace 2 at the uh, end of the stream. Let's go ahead and meet Tareen really quick. We passed him once, but it's fine. We'll talk to him. But this is a character that you will meet once you have the DLC. There's a lot of content that gets added. Uh, through the DLC alone. Good shot. And we just didn't have time at the full release to get all of our ideas out there. Thankfully, through our community support, we were able to uh, have the funding to work on a DLC. So this stuff wouldn't exist without your support. So thank you out there for those who did purchase the game. And your continued support by purchasing the DLC. Like, all of that's going into Everspace 2, as you all know. As well as those who have supported us with the Kickstarter Everspace 2. All of that funding, just it's basically what we're able to put back into the game for you once it hits the respective releases. So that's good. Yeah, just Everspace for now. What's new in the Stellar Edition that's not in Encounters? So Stellar Edition is exclusive to the Switch version, I believe. And basically what that means is... That is the Switch version of Everspace that um, has both the full game and the DLC in a package deal together. 
pretty sure that's exclusive to the Switch. So, so each one of the versions... Oh man, we almost have enough scrap to give to Turin. We don't, unfortunately, but we can at least give him 100. Keep it coming. For those credit, uh, that scrap we just gave him, what he's requesting from us, that carries over from run to run as well. So the better we do in this run and we run into him, the better it's going to help all future runs. Let's go ahead and jump again. We're just kind of booking through this. Why are there still outlaws if the Okar and GMB want them gone? Uh, why do people still rob banks even though the police don't want them to? They just exist and they are of ill intent or they're just trying to make their way in the capacity that they deem worthy even though they don't um, understand the rules and the uh, implications of what they're doing with their lifestyle choices. That's why. And yeah, some colonial soldiers did go rogue. Some of them are incredibly corrupt. Some of them in are incredibly noble. Yeah, you have all sorts of walks of life through each of the factions. We only get to see a sliver of it through our experience of Everspace One because we are on one very specific mission and that's to survive, right? Like we're not really out here to help or hinder the Okar colonial treaties. We're in here to literally make sure we don't die so that we can uh, figure out what's going on, why we're cloned, um, all these other happenings. That's, that's really our end goal. You could say it's pretty selfish, yeah, but we also don't really have anything else we can do, otherwise we're like in this constant reset of being cloned. Which for some, maybe they don't think it's a, a big deal, but I think for, for us, like we want to figure that out, right? We want to know what's going on. And that's what's really driving this narrative forward and the player forward through this progression. Now we might die here uh, because this is this is bad. Oh, we, we got a drone override. We're gonna use that now. Uh, we're also gonna remove this because I don't like it. So salvage that. Uh, energy injector, use now. We're gonna drop this ARC 9000 because we're probably gonna use that later, but we're gonna build some corrosion missiles to try and take out this nasty marauder. Corrosion missiles eat through shields and they just go straight into the hole of your opponent, making things considerably easier, I'll say, uh, given the right situation. So there, that's what, how we were able to swing the battle to our favor pretty quickly. Don't even know why I said that we would possibly die. Perfect. The odds were certainly against you. So we're going to go ahead and take the Arc 9000 again and hopefully be able to use that soon. We also need more fuel, but the warp gate doesn't require fuel. Warp gates are always at the end of a sector. So we can at least make it a little bit further. We are going to have enough fuel to do another jump though, so that's good. Blood Dragon says, what's funny is the very existence of a colonial clone shooting their way through this DMZ is probably putting strain on the treaty. You're absolutely correct. So the player may not be intending to do harm, but the presence of the player's character is anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. You are 100% correct, Blood Dragon. So Super Nuki, one of the things that's really kind of hard to um, to capitalize on is the space that the DMZ, like the territory thereof, like what, how much is there, right? So if we're looking at this from a level of lore and not gameplay, it's so vast and so spread out that there's going to be a lot of pockets of outlaws everywhere. Same thing with GMB, same thing with Okar. So every successive run, you're encountering different Okar, maybe completely different factions of Okar, different outlaws, maybe even different factions of outlaws. Um, we just don't know like all of the detail oriented behind that because we don't care. Like as, as 
our character, we literally don't care. All we want to do is figure out why we're being cloned and discover this place that we're going to. Now, if we're looking at it from uh, more of a gameplay side, it's what gives that procedural generation and unique uh, experience every time you're playing the game, right? So you're not really doing the exact same run every time. You might find a lot more of this resource and a lot less of that one the last run. And you might find this weapon as opposed to that one. And you might do a, be doing a different play style. And you might encounter those enemies as opposed to those other ones, etc., etc., which creates replayability, right? So if we're looking, so it's really how you're looking at it. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to say like, you know, yeah, there's a finite number. Well, in a video game, no, there's not like it can infinitely spawn. Right. But if you're looking at lore, yes, you are correct, but we have to take some liberties. Otherwise, like, would the game be fun after a hundred runs? You didn't encounter any challenge. Like, do people like games where you literally point at a green dot and make sure you have enough fuel in order to win? I don't think that would be very interesting. So we just have it completely generate new opponents, have it generate new challenges, etc., etc. So let's keep taking out some outlaws and some Okars to gather some loot. Ooh, we got some plasma mine. This could be really good in the moment. Really good. That drop actually helped us out a lot. Oh, that enemy's gonna take us down. Okay. It's a Mark II. Okay. Almost got his shields down. Let's try and take out the rest of them. We're just gonna use the beam laser. It's a little bit more consistent in its use than the Gatling gun. We're not gonna use a scouter gun. And just keep dropping them until we've got to use our ARC-9000, which I'm hopeful that we're not going to have to immediately. Sooner or later, a crazy big war will start again. It's just a matter of time until we can fight against huge space fleets. There are some who are trying to make a new war. Eek the angry snail. It may or may not be bound to the story of Everspace. Do you reckon there's anything salvageable on this freighter? Probably. But I would not advise it as it so you'll just have to see what happens hmm. and maybe maybe you'll actually help start a war or stop one and that's not even going into Everspace 2 yet who knows what can happen there who knows who who in this stream would know <laughs> but rest assured we want to make sure that we're creating an interesting story with decisions that can create some diversity in uh, what you're doing uh, it's not like it's not like a, a, a story tree where the decisions you're making are going to completely change what happens next but we want to reward you for certain play styles and you know antics and whatnot versus other ones for sure uh, here we go what a relief. Excellent. There are two sides to every story. Ah, we even have the hive there that says there are two sides to every story. Just bringing a little bit more mystery into all of it. My goodness. One thing I love about my Sentinel is the amounts of equipment I can choose from. Yeah, the devices on the Sentinel, like it's an energy fighter. So it allows you to play around with a ludicrous amount of combinations, right? It's a lot of fun in that sense. So I'm glad that you're exploring the Sentinel and having some fun by using a lot of different devices in particular, Joseph. That's cool. Uh, Excelsior says, well, I think Adam is the smaller threat to the treaty at this point. Yes. Absolutely. Matthew says, Everspace has such a great gameplay loop. Every one you make, you're consistently getting new blueprints or glyphs or something. Well, thank you for the praise. And it doesn't feel grindy. That's that's great. It doesn't feel grindy for you. And honestly, we were hoping that it wouldn't feel too grindy for other people. We get that it does. And, you know, it's it, the game's not for everyone. But if you can get past the first couple hours, I think that a lot of people unlock and see so much more of what the game can can provide the difficulty curve can be a little um 
<laughs> rough at the start. Um, but seriously, it's 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 definitely a game that it gives back so much more based on the time that you put into it. Hardcore is like a new game on itself. Hardcore is my favorite part of this game. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love hardcore mode. I dragged a friend of mine into the game. First he said, no, it's stupid. And now he's like, oh my god, I won't. Uh, yeah, right? It, it takes time. It takes a little bit of time. It's much like anything that you want to be good at. You can't just instantly start being good. Like, that doesn't exist. I don't care who you ask. Nobody is just, like, inherently gifted. <laughs> it's, it just doesn't happen. I don't believe it. <laughs> you have to put work into it. And once you do, that's when everything starts giving back. Any chance Carly will show up in Everspace 2? Um, RM, we can't really talk about characters that are carrying over from Everspace 1 to Everspace 2. What I will say, um, which is not an answer to your question, what I will say is that we want to bring um, an assortment, an ass a, a great cast of characters into the world of Everspace 2. And we have taken a lot of notes as to what a lot of player favorites have been and some characters that people haven't really enjoyed. So we'll do what we can to, at the very least, reference the characters that you've met and ex had experiences with through Everspace One's gameplay. Hey there. I'm <laughs> Greetings from outer space! Hey, Shiru! It's always a pleasure having you sneak on in. Keek87, welcome. She jumped away. Um, let's see. I want to answer just a couple more questions and then we're going to push through this a little further. Um, I do recognize that we're a little over halfway in the stream. We will be transitioning over to Everspace 2 dev build to show off a couple of things um, and maybe reveal a thing. Uh, so that should be fun. Waiting hurts. <laughs> uh, waiting's not too bad. It's just a matter of how you train your mind. I know... I know that you can do it. I know that you can set the bar where it needs to be in order to maintain peace and prosperity, to wait for that golden moment when the timing is right and the stars align for you to dive in to the experience that is Everspace 2. I believe in your victory, sir. Compared to Elite or No Man's Sky, it's not grinding at all. Yes. <laughs> Not gonna argue that at all. But it, they're also completely different games, right? No Man's Sky, it's, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's meant to be that type of experience. It's, it's just meant to be. Because you are exploring the entire galaxy, <laughs> right? Um, no Man's Sky, it's very simulation oriented, right? So it puts a lot of emphasis on um, that simulation environment and building everything from the ground up and then making your decisions based on what you want to be. Whereas Everspace, it's very much like a, we want you to pick up a controller or a mouse and keyboard, jump into the game and blow stuff up. That's, that's what we want. <laughs> We're not trying to make it like so crazy deep and complicated. It's like, no, we want it like, a, it's, it's an arcadey space shooter. That's, that's what we want it to be. <laughs> but it does still have depth, of course. It still has opportunities and whatnot. Just in a very different way. They're different games. I always think it's silly when somebody's like, Oh, this is like No Man's Sky. No. <laughs> it's really not. But you know what? I guess all space games look the same, so, you know, there's there's something to that. It's like, eh, it's fine. It's fine. You can be silly. <laughs> Mario and Sonic, they're the same game. I mean, they're just, they're identical, right? It's no Man's Sky ever, they're exactly they're the same. Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, identical, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> Minecraft and, uh, Star Maid? 
the same game. Sorry, that took me a while. My brain malfunctioned there. Uh, needed to restore my... Uh, how to fix the component damage on that one. Didn't quite have enough resources. Oh my gosh. Honestly, you get the point. You get the point. Andy Bean says, reveal all the things! That's a bold request. I like you. Let's see where we get, okay? We're still playing a little bit of Everspace 1. We want to get this jump suppressor down. We've got a couple more jumps we're going to make through this. And then we're going to go see some Everspace 2 stuff. Did I crash? No. My brain did, if that's what you're referring to. Matthew Young. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> You're silly. I like you, too. Can you still back this, or am I going to have to wait for release? Will, um, we still have a lot of time through development. Um, at the end of this year is actually when the early access begins. So if you do have an interest at that point in time, there's going to be so much more content to show in Everspace 2 than what we've shown thus far. I implore you to... Uh, wait it out until the end of the year to dive into that. If you simply cannot wait, um, send a message to me on Discord, and we'll have a little chat. Um, maybe there's something, maybe there's something that I can, I can figure out for you. Uh, no guarantees. Maybe there's, maybe there's an opportunity there, but we'll have to talk about it, okay? You can find me on Discord, uh, by going to... Discord.gg slash Rockfish Games. We'll actually go ahead and jump to the screen real quick so all of you know. Um, let's see. There it is. So you can go over here. Um, Discord.gg slash Rockfish Games in the lower left corner. You head on over to there. Um, it's going to take about five minutes for everything to process so you can actually talk inside of the Rockfish Games channel. But before that even happens, you can see my lovely picture in there. My, I, my name is Eric, RFG Eric, uh, otherwise known as Giraffasaur. Right click on my name, send a private message and say, Hey, you told me to message you during the stream about a potential opportunity with help supporting the game, even though all the abilities to do so right now are closed and then we'll have a discussion and see what that does thank you so much for your patience and my explanation of that that's what you do that's how we talk i am not a robot all right we need to get oh we need this fuel that's why we came over here beautiful fuel much pleasing to my robotic overlords. Much better. What's great about this site is that it's been completely abandoned by the GMB because it's, you know, it's just desolate. So even though there's that GMB fighter, no problems whatsoever. I'll join Discord and drop you a message. Hey, thanks, Will. Hopefully we can work something out. Like I said, no guarantees. Let's just have a chat. Maybe something can come up and we can we can work around something. Uh, let's see. Is that all the fuel? It looks like it is. So let's go ahead and jump out of here. Go to the next site. Mm. Salvage isn't illegal. In, in most cases, I would agree with that. Unless the salvage is within the territory of another. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And technically, this isn't our territory. <laughs> but otherwise, I like it. A neck-cracking robot. Oh my gosh, has science gone too far? You guys are fun. Andy Beans, uh, hang on, I, I missed your comment. I'm checking, the, I'm checking messages because your comments and your questions and your statements are really important. Let that be known. Everspice is like Buck Rogers to me, uh, a bit tongue in cheek. Yeah, it definitely has that interaction between Adam and the um, and the Hive unit, especially. Play an old classic. Do you know Nexus, the Jupiter accident? That's familiar. That name is familiar. I'm not thinking off the top of my head though. That could be a conversation point in the Discord though. When's Everspace 2's full game release? That is going to be um, around the end of 2021. So we still have a bit of time. 
There's a lot of development need to need to be made. A lot of people are like, oh man, I've I've already seen the prototype. It's almost ready. Just release it. We've got so much more to put into that game. You have no idea. And it's gonna be awesome. So you just hold up. You wait for whenever the timing is right so we can drop that for you. It's gonna be fun. They ruled over a powerful but yeah, it is. It is going to be a while. Yet they mysteriously vanished from historical records. Where? What am I looking for? I need. I need a hole in the wall. There we go. A little deeper. What is this? It seems. Out. 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 Oh, hello there. Ancients. I cannot confirm this as I have no data. They could also be Whoop. some kind of wardens. So I'm going to blame if I die on this on my controller because my. <laughs> My right um, analog stick is actually sticking a little bit. So like sometimes when I'm trying to move down or up, my ship doesn't move at all. <laughs> That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Otherwise, we're gonna try and drop this guy. Show you a little sneaky sneak for those of you who haven't completed this. Because there are some nice unlockables that can change the entire run of Everspace. If you acquire them, which we are about to see, hopefully, unless I die embarrassingly. This beam laser is not an optimal weapon for this battle. We also need to make sure we have some energy to boost away from him before he dies. So we're going to wait. Just a moment or two, till we have a little bit more energy. Okay, that's good. Cause that's a black hole. Oh, uh, do we have enough energy? Oh, our pathetic little ship. I think we're fine, okay. Good, good, we're fine. Everything's fine. So the first time you encounter one of these guys and you battle them, it's important to go back in here because this little glowy wispy thing does something. Excellent. What is going on here? The first person view with dashboard is so cool. Dude, I love the first person view without all of the the stuff on top of the screen. Like you can you can choose so like if you go to your options, your display, uh wait, no. It's game, excuse me. Show HUD and cockpit view. You can see all of the data up at the top. You can have it show all of that, but it's redundant because you have all the information already in the cockpit itself. Isn't that neat? So I just have it disabled because it just looks looks so clean. Mm, I love it. Will Everspace 2 release on console same time as PC? That is what the goal is. We'll have to see. So far, it's looking like the process is is working well enough. There's a lot of things that can change in a year and a half. So I don't want to get get you like super hyped for something that could possibly change, but that is the goal. What is that thing, Guardian, I assume? What are they? That is an ancient warden. Ancient wardens are creatures from a time before the Okar even showed up. In fact, the Okar revere the ancients as gods, uh, as also their precursors to existence. So, um, so through that, they are very mysterious. You, the Okar don't understand, the Colonials certainly don't. There could be a lot of, a lot of new information that we could discover in Everspace 2 about the Ancients. So, yeah, this is a fun little territory too. We're gonna, what time is it? We're gonna go ahead and explore this area, and then we are gonna jump over to Everspace 2 in a dev build, just show off some of the things that some people may not have seen yet. And then show something that nobody's seen yet. Eliminate him quickly before he does more damage. We're gonna have Nobody some fun. We're getting ready to have a lot of fun in this stream. So the Okar don't hate you because of the cloning things you did, but because you keep blowing up their gods? No, 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 the, the Okar hate you because you're colonial. That's just, it's, it's cut and dry things for the Okar. The Okar do not I, they just do not accept the presence of the Colonials because that's a violation of the peace treaties. So by destroying the Ancients, like, the Okar don't want any interference 
in with the ancients, but sometimes the Okar are actually destroyed by the ancients. You actually see this when ancient splitters are out there floating around. The ancients are destroying everything. Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe there's not, and it's a bug in the game. Th there's a reason for that. So, yeah, we'll find out more, I'm sure. Wait, hold up! I play this game for a while, and I didn't know everything about it that you could join this. I am shocked. Good! I'm, I'm glad the entire function of this stream is to help new players and veterans alike discover more possibilities. That is the goal. So, I am glad that you saw something that you didn't actually know. That's wonderful. We want all of those sweet opportunities for you to experience. So one of the things that we did pick up, um, right over here, this is the enhancements. These enhancements, I picked up a glyph from that ancient uh, warp gate, and that is something that can alter every single future run if we select it. Uh, we can't select it now, it has to be done in between runs. I don't like this here, we're gonna jump. But there are also subroutines that you can find from colonial derelict stations that can also alter runs. There's a lot. There's a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna put the controller down. I'm gonna kind of stretch a little bit. Oh my gosh. Woo! I also noticed that my mic is just a little higher than normal. Clipping in over there on the, on the screen. So we're gonna take this moment, we're gonna Chill out for a little bit, um, as we normally do. I hope that you will join that Discord. Follow us at Rockfish Games and at Everspace underscore game over on Twitter, where we make some screenshot Saturdays and uh, talk about whenever we're going live, stuff like that. Maybe some behind the scenes details every now and then pop up. It's always fun. Obviously, we're also on twitch.tv slash rockfishgames and youtube.com slash rockfishgames where you're watching the live stream right now. We're also over on mixer.com slash rockfishgames where we do have a couple people over there also watching the game. So thank you for all of your attention and, uh, and hanging out with us. It really does mean a lot, seriously. Like the, the streams would mean literally nothing if you weren't here. So thank you for being here. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and take care of some stuff. Go ahead and stretch. Take a potty break. All of that good stuff. We'll be back in about eh, two, three minutes. Yeah.
Okay, I think I've got everything set back up for you guys to see a little bit of what we've been working on. A handful of new things. Maybe everything's going to be awesome with this. Maybe we'll hit a snag. I'm not sure, but we're going to give it a shot. So, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. So, we are diving into Everspace 2 here. This is the development build. Uh, Blue asks, is that the game music? Yeah, that was that was game music from Everspace 2. We've been working on the music. We're actually feeling pretty good about it. Um, so yeah, so you're gonna get a sample of a lot of new little things here um, that we've been working on. We have showcased most of this already. We do have one thing we wanna show you um, in a little bit that is looking to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you'll stick around for that. What I did here, uh, this is going to probably be really bad, is I made a bunch of outlaws. And we see a freelancer cargo carrier that we've seen before. Kind of hanging around this area. And we also see some outlaw scouts, some outlaw drones. And a madcap. Let's see. And then we also have these armor drones floating over here and a destroyer. Kind of a little bit of everything in this territory. And we had a question about the beam laser um, earlier in the stream and like how it's it's going to be similar then or different to what we're looking at with uh, Everspace 2. So we're gonna go ahead and use it so you can kind of see for yourself. The beam laser, very consistent damage straight at your opponents, drops them pretty quickly. Consistent damage through both the shields and the armor for this outlaw destroyer. Um, he needs more. He needs more enemies around him. My goodness, I guess the GMB took care of all of it. But we also have our ultimate weapon um, starting to be plugged in. So actually, we're going to use it on this opponent and shoot at the weak point, which should take him down pretty quickly. Just bulk through this armor. Okay. We've completely disabled his turrets, which I think is hilarious, and we'll just use the beam laser to melt the rest of them. Excellent. Woo! There's some frame drops for you. So as you can see, like, we've got ultimates. We've been exploring new uh, sort of tools and whatnot. Seeing the beam laser in action there looks a bit more meaty than it did in the original game as well. Um, I can't even remember who kind of requested the information about the beam laser, but hopefully that helps. Um, let's also look at the inventory screen because um, it's been constantly being picked at, constantly being evaluated, um, kind of developing a little bit further. You'll see that my cargo is full of a bunch of weapons. I generated them, of course. You can organize your weapons by like their value, by the latest ones, the item types, rarities, amounts, all of these things to plug into your ship to give you different advantages or disadvantages based on what you're at and what you're doing. Yeah, the destroyer did melt pretty quick, yeah. So, um, and for like the Sentinel, we also have special abilities for each different type of subclass. So here you have the special buff increase. Um, this probably doesn't make a lot of sense for now. Don't you worry too much about that. We'll get there, 20% reduced cooldowns for warfare devices. 72 shield, zero armor, 206 hull. Paltry numbers in comparison to Everspace 1, but don't you worry about that either. We'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> then we have all these little attributes of your ship itself. I always like to mention and talk about how these attributes of your ship are kind of like the different attributes of a Dungeons & Dragons character, where you have your strength and your dexterity, your constitution, etc., etc. Here you have your firepower, your precision, your structure, your resistance, utility, and repair. And each one of these things are going to shape and change how you are utilizing your equipment and and your ship in the heat of combat or exploration. Uh, so these weapons in particular, nothing too crazy about them, I don't think. Uh, but you can see these are both superior weapons, so they provide a boost in certain opportunities. For example, this beam laser, 10% of its kinetic damage completely bypasses the shield, and it also gains 10% experience per kill, and it cannot overheat. Overheating and damage are very much alive and well again in Everspace 2, much like they were in Everspace 1, except now, in Everspace 1, they were initially bound to the components on your ship. Now it's bound to the equipment on your ship. You're essentially swapping out your components, right? 
So there's a chance that something in here could get damaged or could get burnt out, essentially, overheated. And sometimes you'll have a modifier that allows it to not. That's kind of nice. Yeah, there was some lag there. Don't worry about it. Super Nuki, what do freelancers do? Um, whatever they're tasked to do. All sorts of freelancers. All sorts of freelancers. But we'll talk a lot more on freelancers. Like, we've, we've only barely, barely scraped the surface of freelancers. We talked about the freelancer cargo carrier, and that's about it. So, definitely more information on them in the future. Just kind of giving you a little sliver of what we've been working on and how the game has been developing. Here we have our ultimate for the ship, the static overload, um, essentially turning our ship into a ridiculous, uh, uh, just static overload. <laughs> uh, it's like the um, lightning gun from Everspace One, right? We're converting our weapon into a lightning gun and just going bonkers on everything nearby. Unfortunately, we couldn't show you the spread of attack to all those other ships nearby because we destroyed them or the GMB destroyed them, who knows? But um, really, really powerful stuff in and of itself. We also have devices that we are still working on. There's a lot of devices that we want to make better. But I'm gonna hover over this, you can actually see some secret details. Mm, secrets. For the EMP generator, for instance, uh, we have these upgrade tokens. More on that way later. That might even not even stay in the game, who knows? All of this is work in progress. But with the EMP generator, you'll see that there are three different locked statuses. A short circuit, which says the shields of affected targets take 10% damage per second. Hard reset, which means the cooldown reduced by two seconds for every target killed during the effect of the EMP generator. And third one is shield surge. Restore 20 shield hit points for every target hit by the blast. Beings that those are locked, it means that you're probably going to unlock them in some degree or capacity. Maybe you'll choose which one you want, maybe you can get all three of them, who knows? And for every single device that you are going to be gaining throughout the game, you will have modifications you can apply to those. That's just the devices. That's not, we're not even talking about weaponry, okay? We're not talking about the synergetic nature of your modules. We're not talking about uh, the pilot perks and the upgrades thereof. Like. Each one of these little components and facets of your ship, we want to make sure that you can do what you want to modify your playstyle and really experience the, the game in the capacity that you desire. Can you repair them? Asked Blue. That, you asked that question so long ago. I apologize. Yes, whenever your ship's weapons are damaged, you will have to spend a little bit of time and resources to repair them, uh, much like you do in Air Space One. If they're overheated, you have to wait for them to cool off. So even if you had the tools to repair it, you can't because the weapon itself has a malfunction that it requires a timer before you can use it again. So that's kind of the distinction between the two. One is permanently damaged until you repair it, whereas the other one is requires a timer until you can use it. Overheat versus repair. This is very elaborate. There's a lot we're working on. And again, I want to make it very clear. This is still, this is still a work in progress. So everything that I'm gonna be talking with you on the stream, there's a chance that something or other is gonna get changed. Maybe you will never see the 20% reduced cooldowns for warfare devices again. I don't know. It's a lot, a lot can change. And I know that even more is gonna change once we get to the alpha, which is, I mean, it's getting close to a month out now. Like, we're getting close to this. I'm sure that you guys are gonna find a bunch of new things and a bunch of wonky things that you're gonna provide incredible feedback for that helps us understand that we've created a masterpiece or a big, hot, flaming pile of garbage, and we'll be able to adjust from there. So, it's fine, it's great. It's, it's, it's gravy. <laughs> Let's also talk a little bit about the map. I know some people have been really interested in the regions. Uh, right now it says unknown region. That's, it's actually a bug in the game. This is the home turf. So we are at Union Bridge. We've seen this location before in the prototype. Um, just kind of exploring it there right now, just because we can see a little bit more of, you know, the game world. Um, and we have all these different locations that, or regions rather, 
that are occupied uh, by certain factions, uh, certain powers in the game. And throughout your experiences, throughout your decisions, maybe those powers could be manipulated. Maybe this home turf gets occupied by the outlaws, a certain outlaw faction, right? Um, there's potential there. We're trying not to make the reputation system like so overly complex that your mind explodes. Uh, we wanna make sure that you have some basic interactions. You do something nice for a faction, great, you're rewarded, they like you more. You attack a faction, great, they don't like you anymore. Like we're, it's, it's, we're not making it some sort of like crazy simulation of like battle tactic territories in space. No, like goodness gravy folks. So, so that's kind of how we're working with the regions. Um, your actions will have repercussions for those territories, but it's not like it's gonna like be a complete game changer pertaining to the story, which is mostly linear and telling the continued story of a clone of Adam Rosslyn. Whoo, I think the skill trees are perks. Yes, that is correct. Separate pilot perk skill tree, not gun perks, or am I missing something here? No, there, there's pilot perks too. Um, I'm not technically allowed to show you uh, so I'm I'm going to resist the urge, but yes, there are pilot perks that will allow you to diversify not only your character, but also your companions. I've said too much, um, but there's going to be a lot of that. You kind of probably make that out from the screenshots we've shown before, so, but I digress. The point is, is that yes, you're going to be able to diversify um, the character themselves on your ship, and then the ship is just going to go freaking crazy. It's going to go crazy, right? Lots of stuff. There is no Discord. What? There is no Discord. There is definitely a Discord. Discord.gg slash Rockfish Games. I'm going to hook you up right now. Discord.gg slash Rockfish Games. This was over on YouTube. I love you guys over on Twitch. Dropping the Discord link. Thank you to Lil Tulameo. I am dropping it over on uh, YouTube as well. So that's where you can go for the discord link. I implore you to get involved have some fun It's a good time uh, Let's see There are so many people chatting so many people came into the twitch chat near the end of the stream Ha huh. huh, ha I wonder why I wonder why this occurred <laughs> You deviants <laughs> and I love each one of you for it very good. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to show anything else. I have to be really careful what to click. Yeah, I can't show you anything else. But we are working, obviously, on missions. You're going to be able to tackle a wide assortment of jobs from the certain factions uh, in the regions that you're at, on the stations that you go to. Um, and the station, or the, the missions, we are trying to diversify as much as possible so that the redundancy factor is reduced and the opportunity factor is increased. So for example, if you have a ship build that's way better at stealth and sneaking into places without combat, we want to have missions that reward you for that type of behavior and give you something in return. Versus if you have a ship that's like all guns blazing, I mean, it's the emphasis is that it's an arcade space shooter. So all ships are probably gonna have some degree of all guns blazing. Granted, um, the, the jobs, like we want to really like have those specific fun functions to reward you for playing a certain way, right? Translated, that means every single job isn't gonna be, oh, go kill X number of fighters. Oh, kill X number of fighters over there. Oh, kill this specific fighter over there. But it's gonna be more than that, okay. All right, spam E in the chat. I see what you did there, Bloodstar, and I, I actually like it. You're wonderful. <laughs> I love you so much. All right, so um, let's see. Michael, did we have something to show? Goodness gravy, what are, where are my tools? I know that we had something to show. Uh, let me let me do a thing. Give me one second to, to do some things. I know that we uh, don't have any music. So we're just gonna go back to the wait just for a moment. I don't know why that jumped so quickly. Uh, wait. There we go, beautiful. So we're gonna, we're gonna just wait for a little bit. There's the Discord link that you can go to. Um, the Twitch links and stuff, of course. So it's good, it's all good. 
Just need a little moment or two and we'll have some stuff. Yeah, no worries, Michael. I got it. Gosh, a little bit of lag there. My apologies. All right. So we are going to jump over to Rockfish News Network. And it already is showing you right underneath me. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of lag. My goodness. My computer just can't handle all the awesome. So we're going to pop open this folder. Oh my gosh, can you see it? Can you see it? You're not supposed to see it. Um, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that we've already showcased because, you know, we can. We're also going to close out Everspace so that we can uh, have a, a more satisfying view. Uh, just going through some of these ships for the people who haven't seen them yet. This is the Outlaw Viper. Um, he He's nice up close with scatter guns opening up and just barraging you to death. That's always fun. We've got this Outlaw Dreadnought. Uh, which is this massive, basically, space station that um, the outlaw faction, uh, certain outlaw factions use. Um, it's basically like a, a, a moving space station attack platform. Maybe it also is the, the safe haven for some. Maybe it's um, a violent piece of destruction for others. Mm. Let's keep going. We got Colonial Light Cruiser. Uh, this is a ship that you're going to be seeing a bit more um, whenever you the story is more revealed to you. Because as you probably saw in every single gameplay thing of Everspace 2 dev builds, we're not really encountering the Colonials. We're not really running into them. Uh, we but, uh, but we have shown this vessel as a blockout from the tutorial, if you guys remember that from so long ago. That's right. So the Colonials are gonna play a big role in Everspace 2, as well as the GMB, of course. Dreadnought is awesome, thank you for your appreciation. We're pretty happy with the results thus far. More can happen. GMB has definitely upped their game with more guns, with more uh, defenses, because they're not aggressive due to the peace treaties. That could come into play a little bit more through the game as well. We also showcased a large assortment of player color sets that you can choose from so that you could just very quickly get the style and the look and the feel of the ship that you want. But we also, and I always bring this up, I know I'm, it's really redundant, but this RGB right next to my face right here, that means you can choose specifically the red, the green, the blue, for your primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, much like you did in Everspace 1. So if you don't like one of these options, have no fear, you can make your own. But a lot of people, that we've, we've had a lot of praise for some of these skins already. Uh, I don't even know what to call them, but um, yeah, it's fun when people are like, oh, 16, no, 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 24, no, 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 15, oh my gosh, no, give me that 29, oh, 33 is like poison, you know, it's great. You're all, you're all fantastic, and I love you so much. So we're having a lot of fun with the ship colors and whatnot. Um, this, was the, this was actually shown a long time ago. This is that freelance cargo carrier that you very briefly saw in-game. We'll show more of that in-game at a later point. Um, but then in the background, right above me, look at that. It's the Outlaw Dreadnought. We've seen the screenshot. We've seen that ship, but we didn't know what it was until recently. So there's a lot of things that are like linking up and coming into play now, which we're excited to bring it all together. So the last thing that I wanted to show you, um, I don't know what my spacing is going to look like. It's probably going to be it's probably going to be a little bit blurry. Don't worry, I'm going to share it in the Discord after this. But we have a new gameplay GIF from Everspace Two. Mm. So let's go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. This could really use some music. 
All right. Excellent. How's that? Planet side location. Again, it looks kind of fuzzy because I have it maximized, but oh my goodness. This is a rec field on a planet. You can see all of the visceral details of ship parts, ship organs, if you will, just scattered about on this desolate planet. Maybe desolate. Maybe it's a popping planet where everyone goes to party. Who knows? But we're really liking the look and feel of the planet side locations and even the ship that you, that the player is flying i'm sure that you can kind of uh kind of dig that as well is there a way to loop this how do i how do i constantly have it there we go repeat just just go just play excellent so we're really happy with the visual art style uh of these planet side locations and we're still exploring new opportunities with them and all of that of course atmosphere looks gorgeous we're pretty happy about the atmosphere as well um, we may or may not even be trying to do a little bit more with that. We'll see what time allows. Um, but overall, uh, guys know that we are also like everything I've shown you, every single thing that I've shown you today regarding Everspace 2 is a work in progress. I just, I really need to put a lot of emphasis here because so much can change. So much can change. And in order to lock things down into place, not only does it need to meet our vision, but it also needs to meet your standards. This is why we are doing a Kickstarter and doing the early access because your ideas, your thoughts, and your feedback are really what's going to transform this game into what it needs to be. Okay? So if you have any, any inkling whatsoever to, like, experience this in an early capacity to provide said feedback, I implore you, I implore you to put it on your calendars, the early access, the end of this year, that's when you'll be able to dive in. Otherwise, if you're looking for a full game where you don't have any issues whatsoever with the experience and you, you know, you just, you just want a full game. Um, well, you're, you're going to have to wait. You're gonna have to wait it out. Um, but know that we are working very heavily with our community in order to bring this all together. It is so important for us to do that. Like, I cannot express that enough. As your community ambassador, I cannot express that enough. So uh, anytime that you ever hear me say, your voice is important, it's meaningful to us, know that it's not just a redundant sort of thing that I'm required to say or any bull crap like that. No, I'm actually saying that because... You're what's bringing this together for us. The alpha is going to be starting in about like a month-ish. And we're going to have so much to cover just from that alone. And then that's going to carry over into the beta build. And then that's going to carry over into that early access at the end of this year, which is going to open up to the public who wants to dive in. So a lot of time. A lot of time to make sure everything's coming together. All right. Whew. So I know some of you were like, wait, that's it? All that I got to see was a little animated gif? Well, yes. This week, that's all you get. But oh my gosh, I hope you're excited for next week because we certainly are. It's going to be a really fun experience. So a couple of things to end off the stream with. Um, the first thing, um, my wife and I um, have a child that's due basically any time. I am working with the team to ensure that no matter what, you're getting a stream with some extra content next week. So I might not be your host, but whoever is, is going to be awesome. They're going to be fun. And I'm sure it's probably will. Um, <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I will be here next week. Um, showing you all the new things, talking about all the new concepts. Uh, I really hope you're able to make it. Otherwise, um, let's open it up for some questions. I know that you're all thinking about things. Let's crack that open. We've got about like five-ish minutes, I would say. Um, we can scroll through some other images that we've already looked at too, if you guys are annoyed by this, you know, whatever. Um, I'm seeing a couple questions already. We've got Bloodstar saying, how are surface limits defined in visible walls? Uh, that's a really good question. I want to say yes, but I'm not actually sure. I would have to ask, um, I don't even, I don't even know the main environmental designer on the team. I should probably fix that. Um, <laughs> 
But I could I could check. I think it is though. I think it is. When will the next sale for Everspace be? Currently, right now, Rainer, um, Everspace 1 is available on the Xbox for 80% off with the DLC 50% off. Uh, you could probably have seen that from the, you know, the title itself. So sorry for the redundancy there. But uh, know that we will still be having sales for Everspace in the future. Whenever those drop, we will let you know. It'll be on Twitter. It'll be in the Discord. It'll be on other sites as well. So definitely be watching for us and uh, laying in wait for when you're ready to get your hands on the game. Blue asks a pretty good question. He says, can you fly the Dreadnought maybe as a DLC? So we've had uh, some several interesting conversations about flying large ships. The short answer, Blue, is that the game is circulating around dogfight gameplay almost the entire game. Um, the emphasis on is on a one-man fighter who's very nimble, who can customize all of those components. The second that we make it a game about dreadnoughts or battleships or anything like that, is a big change in the gameplay experience. Uh, we have to start thinking about the level design in a completely different capacity. For example, something that you can't actually see on this planet is a territory that is kind of small and hard to navigate that if you were in a dreadnought, it would be, you, you couldn't do it. Like You couldn't do it at all. Um, so in a lot of these little situations, the emphasis is really on that fighter. Um, that being said, there has been some cool discussions in the discord where it's like, well, maybe for a mission, you could pilot a larger ship to do like one sort of thing in a defined, uh, play space, as opposed to being able to fly it anywhere and everywhere. So the possibility is there, but it is very, very fighter focused. Good question. Any exciting new secondary weapons coming with Everspace 2? Absolutely, Seb. We're not ready to show more of the weapons that are coming together, but we've got a couple tricks up our sleeves, and we are excited to talk about them when they're ready to show so that you know exactly how they operate and also like how our visual effects are coming together. So a really good question as well. <clears throat> Rainer is the guy who I was talking about. He now can't wait anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are excited, though. There's there's a lot of things coming together. Cities on planets, ask Hazy Devil. Maybe that could be a talking point that we have soon. That would be pretty dope, wouldn't it? <laughs> Everspace is 80% off on Fanatical. Thank you for that information. Uh, uh, Pelion? Pelion and Michael, of course, my boss, thank you for providing that information. So if any of you want to pick it up on PC, you can do so right now as well. Awesome. Black Hole Launcher, an interesting and, uh, and very frequent suggestion. Uh, I will not deny that. So it's definitely something we could explore. We want to be careful with items like that. Um, heck, I think in the last stream I actually talked about just like a wild suggestion of making a, an item, like a secondary. Shoot forward, suck in your foes, and then you could like blast everything that gets sucked in, right? Kind of like a black hole launcher. Maybe. It really comes down to two big factors. Does it feel good? And is it beneficial? Because if it doesn't if it doesn't feel good, like if it looks wonky or it has some janky sort of elements that happen because of it, eh, it's a toss up. So, but yeah, we've got a lot of ideas. Don't you worry about that. If you have even more, the Discord's a great place to go. We don't have a link on the little waiting screen, but you can also go to everspace.game and we have an open forum that's available there. A lot of people miss this. But a forum is a great place to go to deliver your thoughts because unlike Discord, you can create threads, right? So one person brings up a topic and then tons of people can talk about that same topic and it's all nicely organized. So please check out the forums. Again, that's everspace.game. Definitely do so. Eek, the real angry snail asks parties. Um, I would love to party. Where, where do you want to go? What place do you want to go to? 
Um, otherwise, if you're referring to the game, then parties, we have talked a little bit about companions of the game. We haven't revealed an over amount of information about them, so that'll have to be in the future to uh, completely cover that territory. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm, I really love board game parties. I like chocolate and milk. Uh, it's, I'm a real happening person. Some people are like, hey, do you want a beer? Not really. I don't really drink beer unless it's actually, like, if it comes from Germany, yes. I actually do enjoy those. But anything else, I'm pretty I'm pretty picky, dude. Give me my chocolate milk, please. <laughs> okay, just a couple more questions to answer, uh, and then we're going to transition here. You guys have been great. I love these streams. You guys are wonderful. Don't stop being awesome, per usual. Let's see, how seamless is the space to planetary surface transition? We want it to be as seamless as possible, Excelsior. Um, it is loading one area out and then loading one area in. It's really going to come down to your computer's processor, your computer's RAM, your computer's etc. Um, it's, it's that type of transition. So if you have a really good computer, it's almost going to look like it's seamless. Um, if you have a crappier computer, you might have like a couple second waiting in between the transition, but we're not trying to do anything crazy. Uh, again, like the landing on planets going down to these planet sites, remember that we're not creating an entire planet. We're creating a very intentional space on the side of a planet that you can fully explore. The level is handcrafted. Everything about what you see in this gift behind me is hand crafted intentionally placed to provide a strategic advantage or disadvantage based on the levels construct okay so it's not like the whole world's getting procedurally generated so no matter what angle you fly down to the planet it suddenly comes into view no like you're flying to a specific point at these locations because again they are hand crafted okay very very important so um, so yeah, with that being said, the transition again, it's mostly seamless, but it's not like it's not, it's pseudo seamless. <laughs> oh, I love tea talent. Oh my gosh. Tea, tea and I get along great. I'll take an Earl gray. Uh, I'll, I like ginger tea, um, green tea. I like tea. Tea is great. Seems less is totally overrated. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Is very more Everspace 2 heavier than Everspace 1? Is very... That question confuses my brain and it hurts. Um, any infiltration missions where you have to fly enemy ships in their formations? That could be an interesting game design component. Most of the time, the player will be flying their spaceship... Um, not saying that's not possible, but we'll have to see what type of missions we plan to, to build out in the future. That's a good question though. All right, guys, I've got to go. Um, oh wait, one more question. This is the last question, uh, from Eek, the real angry snail. Are there spaceships that just crash on planets because they got no wings to fly? <laughs> that's not going to be our last question. I need one really good question to answer. Uh, but eek the real angry snail probably is the answer. Um, but also maybe not because we're not going for like super high quality realism, obviously. We, uh, there's also, like you can see the um, GMB transports. They don't have any wings, right? You can see them flying in Atmo as well in some levels. You've already actually seen it in some. You guys are silly. Is Everspace 2 heavier than Everspace 1? Oh, you mean like the the... The content itself, like how much content there is, the weight of the game, the answer to that is absolutely. Technology has developed considerably since the release of Everspace 1, and it's it's crazy the new tools and abilities that we have in order to not only optimize the game, but also to add so much life and vibrancy to it, while also building so many unique tools and equipment options for you throughout the game space. So, yes absolutely um it's a very different game from everspace one but it has a lot of those familiar uh mobility controls and obviously the characters uh that you're familiar with a lot of them are going to be very familiar territory to you as well um 
So it's a really solid transition from a story-driven standpoint, a lore-driven standpoint, even to a degree a gameplay-driven standpoint, while we are transitioning that roguelike mechanic into an open-world RPG. It's going to change a lot of how you'll be navigating it from now on, but um, but still, like it's going to be familiar to to you veterans out there. Okay, I I've gotta I gotta go. <laughs> That's it for the stream. But seriously, guys, thank you so much for being here. You have been the champions. You are all awesome. It's fantastic having you. So this is where I say my my goodbyes. I'm gonna pop up that screen one more time where you can go to the Discord. You can have conversations with us. We're always available, except on weekends, except sometimes. Um, be looking forward to next week. Don't stop being awesome. I won't stop being Eric Schrader, your community ambassador. And we'll see you, we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Friday. Update might come sooner. Who knows? All right. Toodles. Ah!